martial arts, or what we call Kung Fu, in the United States have been practiced in China since 2600 BC. For almost 2000 years, this formidable legacy protected Chinese emperors and defended the Chinese nation. But for many Americans, their understanding of Kung Fu has been shaped by what they see coming out of Hollywood when Bruce Lee brought Chinese martial arts to America in the 1970s. His dazzling movements, combined with intimidating vocalizations on the screens, created an air of mysticism among youngsters. The Kung Fu TV serials, also produced in the 1970s, paved yet another way for Americans to understand more about Kung Fu practice. In more recent years, Hollywood Chinese Kung Fu stars like Jackie Chan and Jet Li advanced these traditional Chinese arts and inspired many followers of Kung Fu in the United States. But it seems that those movies and Kung Fu TV serials did not accurately portray the heritage and the philosophies behind real Kung Fu. Beginning in the 1970s, when Kung Fu was entering a prosperous growth period, the fighting, death competitions, and the terrible destruction portrayed in the movies acted to only mislead the public and mask the many benefits of traditional martial practice. It looks really cool when you're doing it. Um, you seem to need a fair amount of physical coordination to pull off the different techniques. And if you're Bruce Lee, you're the man. Those are the things that I've learned about martial arts. It's basically wrapped around discipline and respect. Um, but then it's also, you know, from what I've seen in the movies, it seems pretty cool action fighting. Fighting seems to be very um, ritualized and that it, it's not necessarily about um, the fight itself, but it's about some larger picture um, and that fighting is not necessarily something that these people want to do, but it's a way to express um, and, and combat uh, these larger political or social issues. <laughs> The teachings and disciples at Shaolin Hongmei Kung Fu School are examples of real meaning behind a traditional martial practice and contradict the misunderstandings held by so many. Homei Kung Fu was brought to Colorado by Hawaii Solo, Shifu teacher in 1993. Solo inherited his Chinese art from his Shifu Tony Ko. Although Ta Shifu, a grand teacher, Ko is of Chinese descent. He lived in Indonesia and in the early 1970s emigrated to America. Ko inherited this traditional Chinese art from his grandfather. And Shifu Solo is Ko's most senior student. Well, I think it's it's so good that uh, to have to hand down our culture to other people, and especially if your own generation, your son and your grandson or granddaughter, grandchildren, and then we see here in in Boulder community here in Colorado. We have so many tremendous amount of Chinese immigrants that come here, and it is so good that we can preserve our tradition and hand it down to the Chinese, because where can they get it here? In the early days of Chinese martial practices, they were meant for for defense, for fighting, for war. Uh, the martial practices were created by military personnel in ancient China. Sit-ups, push-ups, 
Jumping Exides. It's the start of a new class in Shaolin Hongmei. The students then go through various tennis training, punching, stretching, kicking, and blocking exercises. Next is a practice of a series of different patterns belonging to the Hongmei family. After that, the students will break into smaller groups or individuals and train more advanced patterns. Shift Solo will correct areas of deficiencies exhibited by students, explain the theory and the philosophy behind the movements. The essence of Kung Fu is much more than the art of fighting. It does not teach that practitioners should strive to fight others or to seek revenge. Rather, it teaches that practitioners must learn to control their own thoughts and emotions and overcome obstacles within themselves. On a very superficial level, like a lot of listeners see in the movies and stuff about overcoming other people, as far as you know, fighting goes and stuff, but it is, I think, mostly actually overcome, about overcoming yourself. Alexander Qing, who has been practicing Shaolin Hongmei for 13 years, followed Shifu Solo, has its own understandings about this ancient Chinese art. It's not necessarily about this learning stuff from the school, as far as, uh, you know, self-defense techniques and stuff like that, but it's about what you can contribute as a person. And I think that mentality is what's ultimately important. A better understanding of oneself, a strong sense of confidence, passion, and commitment are some of the most important lessons one learns from practicing Kung Fu. Before I started, I was really shy and you know, I had trouble socially, and then practicing Kung Fu has really helped boost my self-confidence, and as I understand myself more, that's where a lot of it comes from. Repetitive training is the fundamental methodology behind the Kung Fu. Repeat, repeat, and repeat again, until your action is a second nature. Willpower is more important than physical condition, reflecting the central aim of Kung Fu to train both one's mental and physical power. It's about progression and not necessarily to a destination, but if I start in one place and I'm working towards a goal, even if I don't reach that goal, the steps along the way and just all the work and effort and commitment I put in that, to me that's, that's basically the essence of my practice. In Kung Fu training, practitioners emphasize the value of respect for culture, lineage, ancestors, and peers, which is a critically important component in traditional Chinese heritage. The top placard on the shrine exhibits or shows three figures, uh, Liu Bei, Zhang Fei, and Guan Yu, also called Guang Gong. Uh, those three figures are considered honorary forefathers of Chinese martial practices. The placard on the second shelf of the shrine essentially says, in honor of the Shaolin Hongmei ancestors seated here. And as you may have seen in the earlier footage, we open each class by lighting incense and bowing to the shrine to pay respect to those teachers. One of the remarkable Chinese cultural elements is line dance in Kung Fu practice, which has its origin in Guangdong province, South China. 
legend has it that the performance of Line chases away evil spirits and welcomes good luck and good fortune. Ramako, Tashif's only son, is a great master in line dance performance. As the inheritor of his father's kung fu skill, his father entitled him as Shifu like Solo. He's now teaching line dance in homemade school in cooperation with Solo. Uh, it's important as a kung fu school for us to do line dancing. Line dancing is as much of kung fu as kung fu is line dancing. Um, Kung Fu practitioners practice the, they perform the line dance and display their stances. Um, not only just their stances, their spirit, their focus, their uh, power is all exemplified in the line dance itself. Another important factor reflects the Chinese culture is weapon set practice such as sword, stick and spear. In the Shaolin martial arts, training without weapons is considered incomplete. If you look back historically, uh, your weapon was your life. If you, if you had a weapon that you were brought to combat and you dropped the weapon or were forced to lose control of the weapon, you could be killed. Weapon practice can help the students to enhance their power and stamina, reinforce their standings and improve hand-eye coordination. Only solo senior students with high Kung Fu level are selected to practice weapon. Your Kung Fu is basic, your basic blocking, your basic focus, the same thing. You have to get that feeling to really move it and really feel it. Not just going over the motion, whatever you do, you can't do that. And I believe Tai Shifu Ko and Solo hopes to protect the originality and integrity of this traditional art. In Homei Kung Fu School, Homei has been taught the same as it was taught since Qing Dynasty. Solo seriously followed his Shifu Ko's instruction of no compromise to any commercial business. Today's Homei Kung Fu School is a totally non-profit organization. If they promote with the good intent, mean they're not trying to corrupt, to prostitute the art. With some Kung Fu school or martial arts school, they mix it, they make uh, just so they can make money. Bottom line is, uh, I would say that they combine a few things they learn from movie or from a YouTube, from book they learn, and then they call themselves whatever that style. That kind of teaching, I will never approve. Confus values of respect, harmony, fairness, and self reliance motivated generations of Chinese people to overcome foreign oppressions. Now, Shaolin Hongmei has transferred from martial, a physical training to overcome opponents, to an art, an art to promote the breadth and depth of Chinese culture. I certainly hope that some of our students here uh, can stay with us long enough to reach a level where they can be certified to continue to teach Hongbei on their own elsewhere. It's just like the, the branches of a tree. You have a strong trunk, and the more branches you have, the stronger the tree will be. There's more leaves to pull sunlight and energy into that trunk and help the roots grow. <laughs> Shaolin Hongmei in Boulder best explains the true meaning of Kung Fu. It is not only a form of combat or a form of devotion. It is too many aware of life 
A life demands both spiritual as well as physical training.